Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of my uh, iRacing Talk series. I think this is the 13th. Uh, don't quote me, I missed last week. Uh, I didn't announce it or anything, but I, uh, I just wasn't home. I was away from home, so I didn't have anything I could record it on. Well, I could have, but uh, I probably should have, because a lot did happen. Um, but it wouldn't have been with iRacing going on in the background, which uh, let me know if I should just like sit down and talk or um, just keep the iRacing, you know, let me know what you guys think about it. And uh, without uh, one more thing, before I get into it, I just want to say make sure you check out the links down below. Also like this video and subscribe, helps out a lot. Uh, and there is a current giveaway going on on my Instagram, uh, so go check that out too, link in the bio. Uh, but now without further ado, uh, first thing I want to talk about, not going to talk about it a lot, uh, since it was more or less during the week that I missed, uh, but Bubba Wallace and everything that has been going on uh, with him, you know, with the Black Lives Matter car and uh, saying they should ban the flag and NASCAR actually banning the flag, um, so I'm not going to talk about it because, you know, everybody hears about it all the time, so only thing I'm going to say, uh, kind of new. Talladega was uh, two weekends ago. And outside of the uh, racetrack, there was a parade apparently, not like a parade, but a bunch of uh, cars and trucks lining up outside the racetrack with Confederate flags and everything like that. And there was also a small plane flying above Talladega Speedway with the Confederate flag and a sign that said Defund NASCAR. Um, not really going to go into too much on it, just wanted to say uh, that that happened, that's been going on, just in case you missed it somehow, uh, that did happen. Um, next thing, we are just got a lot of uh, water racing stuff going on since we had four races, or five races, but we won't talk much about the area because nothing happens, nothing really ever does. Um, but we had a triple header on Sunday. That's because the truck race on Saturday got postponed. So, we, uh, before we get into it, we will uh, talk about cup race on Saturday. It was actually a pretty good race, in my opinion. Um, I should have been there, you know, with Rona and everything, that's why I'm not. But uh, I was all, my friend and I, we were all ready to go uh, to Pocono for the first time ever to see the doubleheader, but... Uh, unfortunately, it didn't. Uh, it didn't go that way, and uh, you know, nothing has gone gone anybody's way. I don't think it's been pretty limited for people that have, you know, come out of this um, with a with a big ass smile on their face, a giant ass smile on their face, as uh, Dale Jr. might say. But Pocono was actually a pretty great race which makes it even worse that uh, we missed it. But it was, in my opinion, very good, close, tight racing. Um, and as you might expect, the cup race was definitely one of the cleaner ones. And even then, it wasn't, you know, totally spotless. So, uh, cup race on Saturday. Kevin Harvick was the winner. Denny Hamlin finished second. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, or bring it up again, and I'll talk about it. And next thing, we're going to get right into it, the Sunday triple header, um, which would have been great to see. All right. Who would have seen a double header if I was there? But a triple header just would have been even, even better. So, sad that I missed it, but it is what it is. Uh, it was what I would consider one of the best days in the racing world. You know, you wake up at 9.30, and, uh, you get yourself some breakfast, and you sit down and watch a nice truck race, uh, a messy truck race, and then, you know, 12.30 rolls around, you're, uh, you're there for lunch at, uh, Xfinity Series, and then, you know, 3.30, but it ends up being, like, 4.30, and then 6.30 uh, for the cup race. Um... We'll go one step at a time here and uh, start with the truck race. 
trying to uh, write something down here. Hold on a minute. So first thing, that truck race was just absolutely a wreck fest, and there's no way around it. It was just, just bad. You know, cars were wrecking left and right. I don't know. I'm trying to find how many cautions there were, but it was like nine or ten, I think. And uh, just, just was a mess. So, 2019 Okano Truck Race. Uh, lap, wreck one, turn one. Stuart Friesen was in it. And then we come to 2020, one year later. We get another wreck in uh, turn one, lap one. And uh, this one is with, uh, it's pretty much Cody Roba, uh kind of got bumped uh, by Austin Wayne Self. Wasn't intentional, just drove it in and uh, hit Roba, and Roba went up the track and took out Crafton. So that was the first one. And then, uh, wouldn't you believe it, Stuart Friesen, the guy who wrecked out on the first lap in last year's race, uh, narrowly avoided missing, or uh, narrowly avoided this one, and almost got collected in it as well. And there was another caution where uh, Stuart Friesen just about got in it as well. And they were both within like five laps of each other. So he just has a thing for uh, lap one antics at Pocono, I guess. But he avoided them both. And uh, he, uh, pretty sure he finished pretty good too. Uh, got a top ten, finished seventh or eighth, I'm pretty sure. But uh, missed two and uh, got a good finish. And then Raphael Lassard, I don't even remember what corner it was in. But he was coming in the corner and just got a little too low and clipped the grass. And it like turned his truck like just hard right and just went right up the track and collected off the road. And uh, then Majeski got in a, uh, got in an accident there towards the end. And that was a hard hit right down into the inside wall I'm pretty sure kind of like what I just did but a lot harder and a lot faster um, and then the story of this race was like KBM you know, Cowboys Motorsports um, take a look at their drivers here going from lowest in the field to uh, highest You've got Raphael Lassard who finished 37 with that accident I was talking about then you got Christian Eckes who finished 33rd with that accident I was just talking about a minute ago. And then... Can you think of who the other driver is? He's got four trucks, right? Or is it only four when he runs, I think. But then, uh, Brandon Jones, who's running the 51, Xfinity Series regular, hasn't won a truck race. Uh, he did win the race. But two, two KBM cars wrecked out. And uh, Christian Eckes was one of them, and he was going for his first career truck win, and I think it was like 11 to go. Uh, he uh, spun from the lead, blew a tire, and spun from the lead, and just wrecked the truck. Uh, threw his race away, and it's something you would see out of a Chase Elliott motion picture. So that, uh, I would say, handed the win over to Jones, but it really didn't. Because uh, there was an overtime, or that was an overtime finish, and uh, Sheldon Creed was on it, those, that, those last two or three laps, whatever it was. He sent it right in there, threaded the needle between Hill and uh, Jones. I was rooting for him, because uh, he's kind of just one of those guys that I root for. Just, don't really know rhyme or reason I just do and uh, he sent it in there and uh, almost came away with the win but uh, Brandon Jones took it back over and collected his first truck series win got a win in the Xfinity series before he did truck 
but uh, Sheldon Creed was great. You know, pretty sure he won a couple stages. Yeah, he won the first two stages and uh, still finished third, so it was a great day for him. But uh, I'm sure he obviously wishes that he could have uh, could have gotten you know two two better spots. But um, this truck race was just a mess. There, like I said, there was nine or ten cautions. They just were wrecking after you know, lap after lap after lap. And, you know, I understand the no practice thing, and then especially, you know, I'm sure waiting all night and getting up at 9.30, well, obviously before 9.30, but racing at 9.30 in the morning, that's something to do with. But, you know, for NASCAR drivers who are considered to be some of the best uh, drivers in the world, you hope to not see as many wrecks. Um, but moving on to Xfinity. Brandon Jones won the truck race, first of his career, and then goes out, starts Xfinity, and wrecks on lap one. So, quite a turnaround, <laughs> a tale of two stories there by him, you know, getting first place and earning it, you know, racing hard for it, and then uh, getting turned by Austin Sindrick, who is uh, an aggressive, uh, in my opinion, very aggressive not my favorite driver in the world, and I don't like him one bit. So, got turned by Austin Sindrick, and I've said it before, and I, I am positive I'll say it again. He is just, he's a dick, honestly. Um, I don't know about much about what he's like outside of the racetrack, but when he's in the race car, he seems to be, he seems to be, you know, an ass. And uh, in most of his interviews, he seems to uh, be the same way. So, I... Um, he could be a completely different person when he's not at the racetrack, and that could be the case. But when he's at the racetrack, inside and outside of that car, he's just not my favorite person. And uh, he just, he just not my favorite. I don't like him, never have, and uh, probably never will. But the Xfinity Series race was kind of the same thing as the truck in terms of wrecks. Um, you know, they were wrecking left and right, as we were just talking about Cedric, uh spinning Jones, and then there was one moment in the race where uh, Justin Haley straight up dumped Riley Herbst, like dumped him, and he was, I'm not, you know, obviously I've said it before, but I, I, I root for Haley, I like him, you know, this isn't like Creed actually that have a reason, for, you know, for liking Haley. And uh, that kind of thing. So I said it before, but I like Haley. And uh, he just turned him. I'm not trying to defend Haley, uh, but when they showed the replay, it didn't show much. But it looked like Herbst maybe bumped Haley uh, in the corner and on corner exit. It wasn't a lot. Uh, I'm just speculating uh, as to why he dumped him the way he did because he didn't just, you know turn him oops he didn't even make it look accidental he he pulled a Kyle Busch on Chase Elliott at Darlington except everybody knew Kyle Busch didn't do it on purpose because he's he's better than that you know as a driver Justin Haley just took him out um, ended Herbst's race but um, he didn't damage the car too much he uh, and I don't understand the move because like I said the contact wasn't that much well, actually, Herps finished top 10 still, so it didn't really ruin his race, but I don't understand the move by Haley. You know, it wasn't, you know, something to really go and get upset about. And it was still early in the race. They were still running like 7th or 8th at the time. And Haley's running for the dash for cash, you know. So I don't understand why you would jeopardize a dash for cash win or just a win or a good finish uh, for something that wasn't even that big of a, an incident uh, especially because NASCAR wanted to prove their point they didn't mess around they uh, held Haley, uh, Haley two laps on pit road uh, for his uh, go around there with Herps so that's what ruined his race I don't think he got back on the lead lap ran two laps down uh, from that point on 
and uh, I didn't I didn't understand the move but uh, it is what it is I guess rivalries in uh, NASCAR are something we're looking for everybody says so um, maybe maybe if they make it to cup one day which I'm sure they will um, Herbst anyway because he seems to have the uh, the money and the sponsorship backing and the start at JGR so I'm sure Herbst will be there one day uh, Haley will probably have a tougher road but if he sticks with Colleg uh, and keeps doing what he's doing he's, he's got talent I don't know I don't know what you guys think but I think he's got talent and I think Colleg is a pretty pretty good team and they're still getting better so uh, he's just got to uh, got to stay with him and uh, not do not make too many more mistakes and ha be involved in too many more incidents like that but uh, next thing there was a big one at Pocono and uh, it was right after right after a restart I'm, I'm pretty sure but um, going down the back stretch the first one and uh, Myatt Snyder and Noah Gregson had a run in. Uh, honestly, don't even remember where. It was either Bristol, Martinsville, or Richmond. Uh, or Darlington, maybe. I think it was Darlington. I don't even know. Uh, but they had a run in at a track uh, where Gregson just had no patience and turned it. And, I was going and Snyder pretty much returned the favor. A um, whole bunch of cars were involved. I mean, there was. You know, Ryan C., Justin Allgaier, um, pretty sure Michael Annette was in it, Gregson, Snyder, obviously. Uh, but there was a good 10 or 11 cars involved in this wreck. Uh, some more than others. But basically, they were coming out of the corner, turn one, I think it was. And uh, Noah Gregson, I don't know if he got tight or what it was, but he kind of slowed up a little bit. And Snyder, I don't know if it was intentional or not. Uh, I'm guessing it was wasn't necessarily payback, but more of a you know I'm not going to give you anything kind of incident, and just kind of drove straight in the back of him, sent him around, and from there they collected you know like I said 10, 11 other cars. So uh, that was a pretty uh, big wreck for um, I mean Pocono has had some big wrecks and some hard ones, but you know there was a lot of cars, so uh, that really narrowed it down to the uh, to kind of who was left there at the end but Chase Briscoe uh, did win the race his fourth win of the year I believe um, also he was racing with Ross Chastain there uh, Chastain got the dash for cash and uh, it wasn't necessarily an easy win for Briscoe either because he pulled a uh, spin and win there and uh, he spun out with, with, it was within 20 to go, I think. Had a tire going down. Luckily, he got it down to the apron and slowed it down enough to where the spin out wasn't, you know, completely out of control. And he was able to keep it off the wall. Uh, you know, drove back up through the field, won it. Chastain finished second. And a couple shout outs I want to give here uh, for this race Jeremy Clements, uh, who is a NASCAR Xfinity Series winner, finished third. Uh, probably his best finish since his win, which I think was at Road America back in like 2017. Uh, Myatt Snyder finished fourth. I think that's probably the best finish for the uh, RCR Xfinity team this year. Uh, Michael Annette finished fifth. Justin Allgaier, who like I said was involved in that wreck and I think it had like the right front side of his car torn off. Still, uh, still drove it and uh, finished sixth. Brett Moffitt, you know, not in the best team. Actually, both Brett Moffitt and Timmy Hill finishing 7th and 8th. Uh, both involved. Not the best team. Uh, some good finishes there. Riley Hurt got turned by Haley, still finished 9th. Jesse Little, uh, pretty sure, was involved in that big one and still finished 10th. And then 11th. Uh, we got a couple more shoutouts here, but um, 11th. Number 36, Dexter Bean. I'm just looking at the uh, at the list now. Who is this guy? I 
I don't know who he is. I didn't. I watched the entire race yesterday, and I had no clue this Dexter Bean guy was even a person. But he was driving a 36, and apparently uh, he finished 11th. Uh, and then the next and final shout out I want to give is to Ryan Vargas. He finished 13th in like his second or third Xfinity Series race. Finished 13th, uh, but he was running, I want to say, 7th or 8th there in the last two laps, but had a tire going down, and uh, unfortunately, uh, cost him some spots, but luckily it wasn't, you know, 20 spots, it was just uh, 6 or 7, so could have been worse, but could have been better, but um, I've met Ryan a couple of times at the racetrack, and uh, you know, good guy, he's very uh, personable, and hasn't uh, hasn't let the NASCAR driver lifestyle get to his head as much as some of the other drivers that we've seen. But Risco wins. That'll just about do it for the Xfinity uh, section of this episode. And that'll bring us to the uh, Pocono 2, the last cup race. And... Uh, like I said earlier, Pocono, it surprised me. I wasn't expecting to be uh, to be this happy and be that entertained. But uh, it really was a great race. And I think a lot of it had to do with the PJ1. Because you were seeing uh, some of the cars get better runs off the bottom. You know, out of the corner. But because of that PJ1 the cars on the outside were you know able to stick it and hang on to it so it created you know a two lane track uh, and you know sometimes there were there were three wide at times in the corner uh, I think there were even four wide at one point uh, in the first race uh, Mike Joy was talking about it a little bit but the PJ1 I think is what did it it uh, I think it really helped out the track a lot, and it created much better racing. And uh, I'm jealous because I should have been there to see that racing, but uh, maybe next year, next time. Um, first big thing I want to talk about is uh, Ryan Blaney, who is, you know, probably one of the cleanest drivers and one of the nicest drivers. And uh, I don't want to say one of the best, but he isn't a slouch, you know, he can go out and win a race when he wants and needs to, and he, he's done that, he's won three races, three races, yeah, yeah, Roval, Talladega, and Tal yeah, yeah, three races and a duel in the Cup Series, and uh, he just straight up drove in the back of Kyle Busch, and uh, I, like, I don't think it was intentional, um, you know, like I said, Ryan Blaney is one of the nicest drivers, and cleanest and if you watched uh, him at the end of his second you know the most recent Talladega win he almost looked and sounded disappointed to win that race now I'm sure he wasn't you know because winning a NASCAR race is a big thing but um, he, he, he looked pretty uh, disappointed because of how the finish was and uh, the fact that you know Jones I think it was Jones and uh, John Hunter Nemechek got taken out by him pretty much and he he said he didn't know they were there, and uh, he just seemed really disappointed in himself that he won a race that way. And uh, but I'm telling you at Pocono, it was coming out of the uh, tunnel turn, I believe, and uh, Kyle Busch was in front of him. I think he was on old tires, and uh, Blaney was on new tires, which is another thing. The strategy this weekend was just all over the place and it created you know battles everywhere and it was just awesome I can't like talk I can't even explain how great this this race weekend was but Kyle Busch was ahead of him running the middle line and uh, Blaney was running low line got a much better run through the corner just came straight up and uh, got in his left rear and sent him around into the inside wall and uh, Kyle Busch had a better interview than uh, what some might think or have expected for getting turned like that, but um, I'm being honest, it's been forever since I've seen Kyle Busch uh, wreck out of a race, and I'm, I'm definitely missing some, but 
it feels like you just don't see him wreck out. He takes such good care of that car, and he's always there, and it's just, it, it really is amazing. Um, and the next thing, end of the race, I posted a TikTok on it, uh, so if you haven't, go check it out, because I can't I show the video yet. I am not haven't really uh, put on a lot of editing for these, but pretty much Bubba Wallace, to avoid a wreck, went down, like cut down to the inside wall. And he was still getting chased down by a car that was sideways wrecking. Got like an inch or two from the inside wall. Cranked the wheel right. Hit a, a divot in the track. And like jumped it. Got all four tires off the ground. Landed. Was sliding right. You know like power sliding right forward. And it was. You got to watch it. If you missed it go check it out. It's It was awesome. You know. And, uh, it, it was just cool. I, uh, so it was a great save by him. He was talking in the in-car afterwards, and they showed it. And he was like, I hope you guys got some new underwear for that one, or something like that. I don't even know what it was, but, um, it was a pretty cool, uh, thing to see there. Pretty impressive. And, uh, on my TikTok, I put some, uh, Dukes of Hazard music behind it, which... Yeah, it's cool and it, I thought it was pretty funny um, but you know maybe not the best time to uh, combine Dukes of Hazard and Bubble Wallace but that's a story for a different day and uh, last thing for the race Denny Hamlin wins it and uh, Kevin Harvick finished second I'm pretty sure so uh, mixed up from the uh, first race Ham Harvick first, Hamlin second, second race and one first, I have a second. So, um, inverted almost, which reminds me, I love the inverted uh, start. I do. I I can't wait until they go back to qualifying, but while it's here, this inverted start is awesome. I just, it's awesome because it, it creates passing for cars that you know don't usually start up front, aren't, or are starting up front. And the cars that usually start up front and run away with the race are having to work through the field and it's creating great racing and just good battles everywhere so um. <laughs> and, uh. so um. I, like I said I hope they go back to the qualifying but uh, this inverted start <laughs> is, uh, is is pretty great and the last thing that I want to talk about for today's episode is NASCAR and its rain luck. Um, so I don't know if you, uh, if any of you guys follow Barstool Sports or Dave Portnoy or any, anybody like that, but uh, he put a tweet out something a couple weeks ago, something like it, I've done the calculations or something. It's like I've done the calculations. And I've come to the conclusion that it rains at 100% of NASCAR races. And uh, since we've returned, it has been true. And, uh, hold on, I'm going to count how many races. I don't even know how many races we've done. 13 or 14 races. And we've done 8 races since we've been back. And it's there's been a rain delay or weather delay at 7 out of the 8 races. So, as he was saying, um, Mike Joe was saying there's been eight weather delays all season and seven of them have been since we have returned or something like that. Um, Homestead was probably the worst because uh, there was lightning and then more lightning and then rain and then more lightning. And uh, Talladega was kind of the same way. It's just something about... A higher power, I don't know what or who, but someone, something, does not want NASCAR to complete the 2020 season. I mean, 2020 in general, but NASCAR is just running in the rain left and right. And, uh, it's just, it's just amazing, uh, because we saw it again at Pocono, uh, pacing and then, all of a sudden there was lightning and then we get back from that and there's you know rain shower and 
just something does not want to uh, make this season go. Um, but that'll just about do it for this one. I hope you guys did enjoy this. Uh, we had a lot to talk about. A lot of it was racing and just kind of recap things. So I hope it wasn't too boring. But um, make sure you like and subscribe. Check out the links down below. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.